Whisper in the back, please. Um, then he looked like he was getting better and then took a turn for the worse just in the last couple of weeks. Also, uh, Doug mentioned his brother uh, having a test Friday the 24th. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, the 31st will be a follow-up. And then we also have the Bardwells. Uh, brother Daniel hurt his back while they're trying to build that garage. And their son, Benaya, has health issues. We want to continue to pray for him. And Sister Ricky in the Netherlands uh, with her eye issues. Brother Aaron Zintz on his way to Pensacola. We got to have uh, lunch, late lunch with him at Der Dutchman. Mm -hmm. Finally got to meet him after the All Balls had been able to meet him twice. We heard you kept him in the parking lot for a while. <laughs> we let him go because he had to... Well, it started to rain, and we thought he was going to have to drive through a storm when we left, but it, it blew in and blew out real quick. We have unspoken requests, and of course, we want to remember all the kids going back to school. What was us? Mariah? Pray for Wendy, Pat. Uh, we prayed for them for a while because they were fishing in the kitchen. They got that done, but now one of their ceilings came in in the house. Oh, my <laughs> and goodness. It's just the drywall, if you will. It's something really old. It was like tiles on them. So huh. they're having to figure that out. And of course, it affects their business because their whole house is for their business. Right. Spray that and they find someone who doesn't. They have really hard time finding good. It's hard. So Pat's been in bad health as well. We haven't seen him in a long time for part of that. So but this won't stress them out so we can't really get to the anything. So. Man. Mark? Yeah, Trump could survive all this mess that he is going through. Your truck? Trump. Trump. I thought you said Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing you got to, you know, I know, uh, Mark, you know this, but just don't turn on the, don't turn on the so-called news. It's not news. It's propaganda. And we could list all the things they've said over the last three years and show that very few of them had any substance at all to it. But uh, we do pray for our president. We'll pray that the commies will be stopped. And, well, it's not just commies. It's, uh, it's, what they are. it's the never Trump uh, Republicans and their uh, globalist agenda and everything. So uh, that's what people, people ask me all the time. I tell them I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm a, a constitutionalist. Yeah. John? Yeah. Um, Real quick, did you get the to number of the, what do you want? Uh, number 70, uh, Facebook, Love Jesus, Father's Love for us. Good one. 70. How deep the Father's love for us. I was just singing that a little while ago. <clears throat> now, John, what was yours? Uh, I'm just going to, we got a chance to pass out parts of the hundred tracks. Amen. What's that? Working late. Oh yeah. All right, let's pray for these things, then we'll sing. Father, we thank you for this fellowship that we've had today, and we just thank you for uh, each one of these young people going back to school, that uh, they, they want to stand strong in their faith and their profession of belief, faith in Jesus Christ. And some are going back to secular uh, truly godless schools where there's no God, no prayer, no Bible. Amen. We just pray, Lord, that they would be able to maintain their profession, maintain their work, and uh, Lord, that 
They might even have an opportunity to talk to some of the lost kids and tell them about Jesus. And there's a lot of lost souls at that campus at Ohio State. Yeah. Lost souls at Columbus State, but there's probably a, a number of lost souls even at the Christian schools. And so we just pray for each one. We pray for uh, all the family and loved ones uh, who are grieving over the loss of Ryan uh, at such a young age. But uh, we're thankful for salvation, for the comfort that comes in Jesus Christ. And uh, we pray for Otis, his test coming up on the 24th, that it'll go well. And that the uh, 31st, when he has the follow-up, they'll be accurate and that he'll have a good report. We pray for Valma. She has her own health uh, issues that come with being elderly. And she's got other things on her mind and heart, but this thing with Otis has to weigh heavy on her, and we just pray for her and Doug and the rest of the family. Pray for Brother Daniel over in Ukraine, the healing of his back Amen. and the building of this garage, and for his little boy, Benaya and his son who's coming to the States to go to PBI. They have, I don't think he's here yet. Uh, they'll have safe travel and a good year down there, and him and Aaron might be able to uh, become friends. Amen. We pray for Sister Ricky and her eye issues over in the Netherlands, Lord, and, and Lord, that she would have some fellowship over there. Bible believers have become far and few between. Yeah. And... Uh, Speaking of Aaron, we pray for the rest of his trip. He's in Knoxville. We have a good time with Pastor Charles with Lawson's Church tonight. And uh, safety all the way down to Pensacola. And uh, these uh, unspoken requests, uh, represented pretty much by everyone in the room. Uh, but uh, there are some that uh, don't mention them because they've been requests for a long long time but it's not that you don't answer we have to face the fact that you uh, you do not force people to do what's right we got a lot of loved ones out there who are in rebellion I, be, I believe when we pray for them you put them under conviction you work on their hearts but it has to be them they have to repent and turn to you. We pray for Wendy and Pat and this thing with their uh, ceiling at their house, that they'll find somebody that'll do the work and do quality work. And uh, we pray for those who received tracks from Brother John and Jill and a number of other people here who have handed out these tracks through the week or being able to talk to people about Jesus. And uh, we do pray for John, his job situation, Lord, that you'd help him with that. And uh, we do lift up our president, very imperfect man, as they all have been, but under attack because of his positions. And the ungodly don't like a lot of what he's doing because it's biblical or constitutional. And there's a growing number of very wicked Americans who seem to despise the Constitution, seem to despise the Bible and Christians and morality. And we're thankful for the president we have right now. And it doesn't help or doesn't change the fact that we would love to go home at any moment. And we look forward to the rapture. But we do have praise reports among everybody that the old ball is coming home safely and thankful for that and others who have uh, had good things happen through the week answers to prayer we just thank you for all of these things lord you're so good to us not one of us deserve to be saved so we give you all the praise honor and glory Amen. you alone are worthy you alone deserve praise you alone deserve our attention you alone deserve our singing and our prayers, all to Jesus, we pray in his precious name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. All right, if you're not there already, we're going to sing number 70. How deep the Father's love. snacks and bring your popcorn. And, mm. you know, Seven o'clock is when we try to get started, but as you <laughs> probably have figured out, we don't always get started right at seven. You know. Then uh, September 2nd is our Feast of Charity. No pizza, but everything else Italian you can think of. Um, that includes, uh, you know, like uh, ravioli. Yeah. Lasagna ovi. And you could bring, what are they called, the pizza... Bites or what they Pizza pockets? Uh, pizza rolls. Bagel bites. Those would be allowed. Bagel bites. Bagel bites, yeah. Just no pizza. Well, right. then a bite? Because. Cook them, don't bring them for you. Yeah, you gotta cook them for you. <laughs> yeah. 
because on the 5th we'll have our next pizza night. And then September 9th we begin our open Bible studies 10 a.m. Sundays. Brother Amen. John will be leading the first one, but Brother Steve will be teaching that day at 11. So uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to sit and watch. Amen. <laughs> at least he's and so celebrate that the next day is supposed to be the official end of ragweed season. Woohoo! And then Rage. John comes a month later. By the way, we're stealing something off of the all balls here. Saturday will be Jenny and my 13th meetiversary. Amen. Amen. 13 years ago, we met. On the elevator. Met on an elevator. Yeah. It's going up, right? It's going down. Uh oh. Don't tell me it's the 13th. Yeah, and I don't think they have one of those. Alright, there you go. If you can set your. Uh... Oh my goodness, Greg. So, Sound was all the way up. Do you want to have one? We're going up every since. Yeah, Amen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. 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 I like the music. Nice. I got to call it. Amen. Amen. Jenny? If it's legal. Yes. Yeah. Come on down. I need you up front, sir. Brother John? Yes. And I just got it fixed oh, for you to do the sermon. Sorry, no good deal. Can you talk about you for me, Jenny? I, you can't ask me anything. I don't know anything about it. Sure. I have to readjust the camera, though. Okay. My liners can't see anything, so okay. just hold on. This is for John. He's been going through a lot of his job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been going through a lot of mine too, but this man's been really awesome to me. This family's been awesome to me. They've done a lot of things for me that I would expect my own family to do. But since I don't have my family, and they, Work they Amen. don't want nothing to do with me, but this is for him because he needs to know that God is there for him. So I got this for you. What's it say? God's plan. <laughs> this is for you. Thank you. You're welcome. There we go. We got to get <laughs> those speeches. There it is. Okay, you're good. Thank you. That way you know he's with you. We and we all agree, Brother John. We love you very much. We're glad you hang in there. Where's the cup of tea? <laughs> now, our next uh, little. Uh, presentation is a funny little skit <laughs> we we wanted to get charlie and olivia saying goodbye to noah because they weren't going to be able to be here today and we just happened to be at the ark encounter in front of the noah's ark <laughs> I see it now really. now you'll see that we forgot to Oh, none of us explained to Olivia what we were doing. <laughs> that was the bad part. So she thought we were just being goofy about oh. Noah who built the ark and didn't get that we were saying goodbye to Noah at Noah's ark just because it was funny. So watch and you'll understand what I mean. <laughs> Have fun at school. <laughs> Bye. School's so different. <laughs> Are you supposed to... Yeah. That's what he's doing. He's going to school. Bye, buddy. You understand? Okay, you got that? Yes, it's What? No, what? Okay, what? What'd you say, Jay? You said something. Oh, Stephen. Stephen. I've this delirious before. I know. I know. Have a nice trip. Oh, wait. Go, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> We found out the next day that Olivia thought we were just doing some weird reenactment of Noah leaving on the boat. How cute. We love you, Libby. She had no idea that we were saying goodbye to Noah Odom as he heads back to school in Pensacola. Bye, Noah. Have fun at school. School's so different. Are you supposed to 
It actually turned out even better by the, her not knowing what was going on. <laughs> We're not making fun of Olivia. No, Jenny lost. was really getting mad at me thinking we were making fun of Olivia. We're not. The point is that they love Noah. And this is why communication is so important. We all assumed she knew what was going on, but we need to assume less. Amen? Teachable moment. Brought to you by... Yeah. I thought I'd throw this in, too. This is from Gab. And this guy's talking about Maria Bola Marto or something like that. What is her name? Maria Bola on Fox Business. And she was uh, uh, showing a clip of Clapper. Wasn't he... Uh, was he the NSA? Wasn't he? Clapper. And he was saying that uh, Obama asked all the intelligence agencies to start this witch hunt that we're now seeing take place on Trump. And this guy said that, uh, and I've not blocked his name, we'll call him Bob, that's his first name, we'll call him Bob. And he said it, he was, uh, he was saying that on Twitter, there was an issue with him trying to share this. And he said, he found the tweet and retweeted it, and it showed up in his sent box, but not uh, on his timeline where he wanted to put it, so he tried to send it a couple more times, and it said, he said, quote, no, uh, it wasn't there. Quote, all scented tweets <laughs> show up in scent, but not timeline. Guess Twitter doesn't want me. So Aww. he said, all scented tweets. You see the, yes. so being the smart like I am, I said, so your post was unscented? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, tonight we're going to do a Q and A, and we're calling this a Back to School Q and A. Ooh. And uh, we'll get into a Back to School question to start. Ooh. I do want to use my Bible. So where's that? There it is. This should be interesting. Oh, I appreciate the gift from the All Balls. Get me my new hat. Amen. I was telling Kim, though, I won't wear this into a restaurant because they'll spit in my food before I eat. So what I do is you carry it in, and then after you've eaten your food, then you put the hat on. Hold on. Yeah, it's going to be Hold on. About what? Oh, yeah. Be careful. You mean take advantage of it. Yeah. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm close, Steve. You might look old enough. I haven't got my gold buck card yet. So there you go. Oh, that's what it is. We won't talk about how close Jenny is getting that. Oh. Uh, back to school I can't wait question. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Now, if you get one, do we both get the discount? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, men, marry an older lady, get the discounts earlier. That's all you got to do. Marry an older man. Someone has to be older. Yeah, somebody's got to be older. All right, here's a question that was sent to me. What do I do when the curriculum or teacher contradicts the Bible? Uh, now, yes. where Noah's going, we hope that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> But it does in some Christian schools from time to time. Yeah. And my answer is there is no easy answer. Um, but always keep this in mind, Matthew 10, 16. Go over there. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. And when I'm asked this question, this is where I always go. And you'll find that this Bible verse is one that we need to memorize in this day and age. Everybody needed to memorize it, but it's getting even more so. The words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. And he was sending out his followers to deal with the lost world and the pagan Romans. And they would, they would ask questions and things and try to, you know, catch believers in technicalities of the law, taxes, and things like that. So here's what Jesus says to us in Matthew 10, 16. If you're there, read that with me. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. 
Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. In other words, here's an example. If you're taking a test and one of the questions requires you to give an answer that in the textbook that you don't necessarily agree with biblically, then I believe you give the textbook answer and get the right get the problem right and get credit for that because the test isn't what you think. You see, if they hand you a piece of paper and they say, now give us your thoughts, then I'd say be honest and give them your thoughts. But if you're taking a test and the curriculum says that uh, the dinosaurs roamed the earth, what do they say, about six million years ago or something like that? And they ask you, what, what, in what geological period was uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex found. And, you know, you, you could, if you want to be honest, you'd say, well, I believe the geological table is a load of baloney. And, you know, that. Or you could answer what the curriculum says, which is, you know, I'm not even sure what. Jurassic. The Jurassic. Should have known that because of the movie, I guess. Right. <laughs> but I haven't seen the movie, so. What? I, we Jurassic saw the Park? first one, I think. Yeah, I saw the first one. <clears throat> and the only reason I remember that one is because the guy off Seinfeld got killed, didn't he? Oh yeah, most yeah. people in that movie. Got What's his name? Uh, There's a without Seinfeld. No, I mean on, on Seinfeld was it? Remember the, the guy yeah. that the damn guy to shoot out? Huh? The guy killed with the rain by the. Yes. That guy. Yeah. Newman. Newman. That's what his name was on the show. Also... Not that I watched it. Hello, Newman. Hello, Jerry. I haven't seen that show. You know, the great thing about YouTube, I, I'm not, I, and, and we're kind of looking to migrate over to real.video because YouTube's starting to censor Christians and everything. But on YouTube, for years, you could watch all these shows that you wouldn't watch normally because they get raunchy, but you could watch the clips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my brother, well, he probably don't want people to know that, I'd say, that he did this, but my brother would send me, whether it's... Uh, South Park. Um, now, South Park, I saw. I, I didn't know any better, and I, so I turned it on. I'm like, whoa! I don't, I don't think I watch that. But there's some real funny clips. Yeah. The ones on the Mormons, yeah, that's an example. <laughs> and the Simpsons. They've. I've seen people post Simpson clips, and they're hilarious. Now, I don't recommend the Simpsons to watch all the time. But uh, if but you want to know anything about it, ask Mark. <laughs> but uh, anyway. <laughs> so I what. Somebody had done a whole uh, side of an auto wreck car, painted the whole South Park cast on there, yeah. Rocky Mountains and Sky and all. It was beautiful. Yeah, there's some talent out there. They just put it on trains, and it's yeah. weird. <laughs> <laughs> we saw it the other day. There was some, some of these cars going through London. And it was like, wow, look at that. You can see a lot of artwork. Yeah. <laughs> so back to the Q&A here. <clears throat> The point was, though, that uh, you, you have to really use discernment. You have to pray and think about what your situation is. Um, the Bible's black and white on some things, and then there's other things it's, it's, it takes some prayer and discernment. And, uh, and I also say that Proverbs 23, 9 says this, Speak not in the ears of the fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Yeah. And that's on whether you're your schoolmates or teachers or people on social media that we've talked about. There's times where you just realize you're dealing with a fool and Jesus talked about not cashing your pearls before swine. And so it's just a time where it's, it's really a waste of your effort. I would pray for them. Maybe give them literature if you got some, but then move on. And there's the answer to that. Now, real quick, a back-to-school joke. If we all just switch to cursive and stick shift cars, we could cripple an entire generation. <laughs> uh, I, I could write in cursive. Just say that. I'm sorry about that. Stick. That's pretty funny. He can't. A stick I have an stick. issue with. How many of you younger people did learn cursive? You read, just, you did? Well, well homeschool like, kids. Yeah. Homeschool, yeah. <laughs> I was, huh? I was on school. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, we don't. Mom wanna... did it like two or three years to us. 
Sorry about that. I, I know, right? Yeah, Mark was on school too, but he went to the institution. <laughs> institution. I was school, but I never went. School of hard knocks. Here's a related question to the going back to the school thing. How can we talk about the Lord to lost students and co workers? And uh, I want to first read 1 Peter 3 15, and then we'll talk about that question more. We'll go read 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. Think about how can we talk about the Lord to lost students and co workers. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 15, another great Bible verse to memorize. Mark in your Bible. Read that with me. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Amen. Now, in practical terms, the answers vary according to the situation. Again, um, here's some of these variables. Is this during class time or on the clock? If you are being paid and you're not on, it's not before work or school, it's not during a break, lunch or otherwise, it's not a recess or whatever, or it's not after work and you're still at work but you're off the clock. Off the clock, you are allowed according to the law of the land, but more importantly, according to God, you are allowed to talk to anybody at any time about Jesus. Now, what you're not allowed to do is harass anybody. So if you know they don't want to talk about it, move on. But especially when they come to you and ask you a question. I had a situation where I was in trouble, uh, or they tried to get me in trouble. Uh, a homosexual, uh, a sodomite, approached me on the job and asked me, so you think it's a sin for a man to be with another man? And I said, yeah, the Bible says it's a sin. And I rattled off the, you know, Romans 1, uh, 16 to 32 is a great place to read to find out exactly what God thinks about that and then other places that I uh, gave him to read. And they pulled me in the office and and I said, I wasn't on the clock. Or no, no, I'm sorry. They, they confronted me and said, you were on the clock. And I said, yes, but I was still working and I was asked a question and I'm allowed to answer I don't lose my First Amendment right of free speech when I'm at work. And so uh, they started to kind of press me on that, and they like they were going to punish me for it. But they made some of their own phone calls, and at the time I wasn't as equipped as I was later. But they came back and told me that that was actually true. They were told by their own human resources director that when you're working, if someone comes to you and asks you a question, you're allowed to answer it, but you can't just stand and talk. And it was witness that I kept working while I was. Now, if you just put everything down and just start yakking for 30 minutes, then you're, you're stealing from your employer. And so, you know, as Christians, we don't want to do that. But there's another little thing there. In class time, you're probably not supposed to be talking at all. <laughs> so if somebody looks across the room and says, hey, what do you think about you know, women wearing slacks, you know, well, ask me after class. That's what you say. Yeah, Jenny? Unfortunately, nowadays, the in thing is to have students talk amongst themselves about the topic at hand. Uh, I think they think we learn it better or something, so. But I, again, if I you. I get plenty of time of talking with people. If you're allowed to talk, you're given that freedom, and someone asks you a question, and you give them a biblical answer, and your professor or whoever tries to punish you for that, you call Pastor Greg, and I'll make them wish they'd gone into another line of work. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. And it'll be an attorney will be right on them within 24 hours because we are going to stand for our God-given right Amen. to believe what we believe and to freely express that. Yeah, Doug? When I was called in, in the office for reading my Bible, and I... Uh, was reading it during the break time. Yeah. And so they put the, they had two bosses in there, so our, our union said, if there's two supervisors, you don't have to go in the office. So I stood outside the office, 
and they said, well, we prefer for you not to bring your Bible back here. And I said, according to the EEO, it's, it's race, creed, and origin. You're messing with my creed. That's right. I said, do it, do it in triplicates. Give me a copy. <laughs> you keep a copy. Document. And we, yeah, and then, and then we'll send the next one. Do the and that's EEO. a very... And I heard nothing more about it. That right there is very important. I'm glad you brought it up, Doug. You yes. need to document. Everything I did was, uh, and I talked to them, but I also sent email, which I have a copy, but I also copied other people who needed to see it. Right. So you got to be smart about it. Okay. Wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And the other thing is, uh, how about during non-class time and off the clock, as I said, then, uh, you know, they, they may be able to tell you, you know, once you're done working, you need to leave the premises. So do that. But then when you're out in the parking lot or whatever, you're allowed to talk to people. But, you know, uh, I've always found it to be even better just, just for the sake of making it a better uh, conversation. If somebody really wants to talk to you, say, hey, man, let's go down to Tim Hortons or uh, Dairy Queen or wherever, whatever's close, you know, Chick-fil-A. Let's go get something to eat or drink or whatever and talk. And uh, sit down with them. Because if somebody won't do that, a lot of times, here's the thing, and I'm throwing this out just as a bit of a tip. A lot of times people will instigate things at work or at school just because they, they're bored or they're just trying to pass the time. And they don't really care. And one of the ways you know that is if you ask them to go out after work for 15 minutes at a coffee shop and they won't do it, they probably don't care. So that's just a little advice there. Now here's something that uh, shows a little wisdom this guy's got a t-shirt on that says, let's talk about Jesus. And that guy with a suit and tie is looking at him and he says, it guarantees me an entire seat all to myself. <laughs> and I actually, I never had one that said, let's talk about Jesus. But when I'd wear some of my Jesus t-shirts, especially a couple of those Ruckman ones where it shows people being cast into hell. And, that kind of thing. <laughs> and I'd ride Coda bus. Never had anybody sit next to me. Never had to worry about it. <laughs> Yeah. They'd be walking in, like, getting ready to, like, and they back off like as a snake Some or something. They might just stop at the word talk. No, no. Yeah, the word talk. <laughs> the word Jesus. <laughs> talk and Jesus, those are the two words. All right, real quick, just to ask Jenny, does anyone online want to give a question? Uh, no one has said anything yet. We just had Becky Beamer mention that an alternative to YouTube that she's read about, she hasn't looked at it, it's UGE Tube. Supposedly conservative friendly. UGE. Never heard of that Maybe one. Maybe huge tube. There's BitChute, B I T C H U T E, and then Real Dot Video. But I haven't heard of it. I have to look into that. Stephen? Um, are there any examples of uh, people in the Bible going to a school of any type? Yeah. Um, back uh, under Elijah, for example. Elijah had a school for prophets. And there's even a reference to them building a building to use as a school building. Yeah, they so regular. Like yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't that like a Monday through Wednesday? But then uh, at, when they after Pentecost, though, for a while they met every day, yeah. and had Bible studies. Yeah, but that's not that's not like school for education. No, as far as the ministry, uh, that prophet school wouldn't fit today. Of course, that is a different dispensation. Um, but uh, there's the the model for going into ministry is mentorship. And so, uh, you know, th that's why I always tell folks if they're wanting to go somewhere to learn the Bible outside of the local church, a Bible institute is usually a, a better choice because Bible colleges and seminaries are very light on Bible teaching these days. They more, they're more uh, preparing CEOs than they are pastors. Wasn't uh, Paul in this verse that talks about he sat at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to that was as a Pharisee, yes. Yeah. wasn't the biblical model; it was the Pharisee model. But that's an example that was, there. That was, that's where he got a lot of his education. Yeah. 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 God will take whatever you learn before you get into the ministry, and you'll find ways where He'll use it. Amen. Yeah, Moran. Regarding what we talked about earlier about uh, who, like who to engage in conversation with the guests, you know, we're very old and testing. Answer a fool 
according to this folly, less be wise than them conceit. And I always took that as you just have to use discernment and decide whether or not it is an appropriate time. But the Bible does say you can engage a fool, but it may not, you know, but you also may not want to. And that's where right. I think the gray area is. It's yeah. just with experience and discernment and prayer, you can decide. There's you know, repercussions I, for each. But I assume you're going to give that person a chance. Yeah. Well, you've had to in order to figure out they're a fool. Yeah. You know, you've, you, if, you've, if you're looking at somebody and say, oh, this guy's a fool, it's because of something you've seen or heard and you've already, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Back to school joke. When you show up for the first day of school and see this, we are committed to excellence. Spelled E-X-C-E-L-L-E-N-S-E. Is it a school for glasses? Is it a school? Exactly. Maybe it's a school for people who make glasses. All right. Another question that came into me a couple a day or two ago. Brother Shane out there on Gab asked this. Turn to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. And the question is in beginning verse 18. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Let's go ahead and read that and then we'll know what the question is about. Matthew chapter 28, beginning verse 18. I'll read 18. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now verses 19, especially in 20, should be familiar to you. Read those with me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now the question is, does that apply to us or not? Some of you are like, what in the world? What kind of question is that? Well, there's this thing out there. Mainly, the reason this is being asked is because of this thing called hyper-dispensationalism. Hyper-dispensations. My answer is, yes, it does apply to us, but it's all about context. And uh, I just want you to, just as an example, turn over to Matthew 18. Still in Matthew, turn back to chapter 18. Now, it is true that some of what you read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John does not apply to you today. For example, when uh, Jesus healed one man, he told him to go and offer the offering prescribed by Moses. Well, you can't do that today because there's no temple. And we don't offer offerings, blood offerings of animals. So that's an example. There's some things you can't do. And it really is how easy it is. That you, you look at the context. You ask yourself... Now, look at Matthew 18, beginning verse 15, is an example where Jesus is giving instructions to the church which hasn't even been established yet. It says in Matthew 18, 15, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, and go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Now, that's quoting Moses. So it was true for Moses' day, it's true for Jesus' day, it's true for our day. Mouth of two or three witnesses, let a matter be established. Now look at verse 17, read that with me. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. There is no church. At this point, there is no church. These are still Jews under the law of Moses meeting on Saturday in synagogues and at the temple offering animal sacrifice. They don't have churches or a church or the church. So what's, what is this? The context is telling you Jesus is giving instruction to the very men who would be the ones to be the foundation of the church. See? So that's why you know that's for us today right there. Well, the same thing's true when you turn back to Matthew 28. He is talking to the men who are about to be baptized by the Holy Spirit into the church. Look over at Acts. Just Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Go to Acts chapter 1. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. And 
And in Acts chapter 2, you, we are seeing the beginning of the church at Pentecost. Now the message is in transition here. So in verse 38, you'll hear people quote this, and this is not the message we preach today. But it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's not what we preach today, and that's not what happens today. If, if you preach that and do that today, you're a heretic. Amen. You didn't get the Holy Ghost when you were baptized with water. You got the Holy Ghost when you were saved, and that's why we speak of two baptisms, spirit baptism, water baptism. Amen. And we baptized into the body by one spirit. Amen. But even at this point of transition is the beginning of the church. Amen. The last verse, verse 47, look at your Bible there, Acts 2, 47. Read that with me. Praising God, read it with me. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. Well, you know what the hyper dispensationalists do with that? They teach that there is more than one church, that this was the Jewish church. And later, a lot of them go to Acts 15 and some go to Acts 28, say that then there's a Gentile church. <laughs> it's hogwash. <laughs> There is one church, Amen. one body. and But listen, this gets crazy, and you need to know this because you got, uh, what's his name, Richard Jordan on WHKC here locally. He went down to Peter Ruckman's school, and like a handful of guys down there, they, they, they rejected Ruckman's teaching and latched on to these other guys, and um, Stam and uh, Cornelius Stam, I think is one of the big namers, and... Uh, Bullinger and some of these guys, and they started teaching this hyper dispensationalist stuff. Now, most of them became very Calvinistic as well. And so, what you have is uh, what a lot of guys do <clears throat> is they find out that being a Bible believing preacher is tough. And Amen. and you you go out and you preach and you're, you you just don't get a lot of immediate satisfaction out of it. You get spit on. People throw things at you and call you names. And you can walk up to people just very very gently and just try to give them a gospel tech. They'll wad it up and throw it in your face. All that stuff happens. And what they find out is it's easier if they just vacate their mind and I and and, and accept this idea that. The, I call it the Doris Day Syndrome. K sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. And so it's much easier to think, well, God's going to save the elect that He has for, ordained you know, before the foundation of the world. And all I'm doing is out there trying to find the people that have an E tattooed on their back. <laughs> and, you know, they're all going to get saved. God's going to save the elect, so we don't have to worry about it. And, see how, and so then they stop even doing it. They stop going out on the streets. They stop yeah. going door to door. They stop handing out tracts. Then they start hyper dividing the gospel. And they even teach things like the fact that communion, for example, they teach that isn't for today. Even though Paul said, as often as you do it, you do it until the Lord comes. But they said, no, that's not for today because they, that's called hyper dividing. So the answer to does Matthew 28, 18 to 20 apply to us or not? Is, the answer is yes. And he was basically, that's the foundation of the church. Amen. Think about how horrible that is. These guys are attacking what is the very foundation of the church. But there's a whole lot of people getting confused by it, though. Why did they stop uh, doing a church discipline? Back when I was a kid, they, used to, they did it all the time. And nowadays, it's well, like, yeah, everything's okay. I don't, I, you know, I don't know what happened in your church, but I can say uh, by and large it was abused that a pastor started to become the Holy Ghost. And the pastor would tell everybody everything they're supposed to do, and if you got out of line, he'd use church discipline. Now, church discipline is not a, a big... They'd have business meetings and all in favor of lashing Stephen, say aye. You know, that kind of stuff. Aye. And, 
Sounds unanimous to me. Get the wet noodle. But, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, church discipline is a simple matter. We've, we've practiced church discipline here. If, if someone is in sin or they call in division and, and this kind of thing, then I go to them and I tell them that they've got to stop or it's going to become a matter that I'm going to share with the church in, in accordance with Matthew 18. But the first thing I do is I go with the person they offended. Uh, well, first, if I see it, I go to them. And then if, I, if they won't hear me, I'll go with the person that's involved. And if they don't hear them, then we go to the church. But here's what's happened. And I think it has a lot to do with the day and age we live. As soon as you tell somebody they're wrong, and I do it lovingly. I don't go screaming at them and throwing things. I just say, listen, this is how it is. You shouldn't have done that. It's wrong. Or you shouldn't be doing this. It's wrong. And you need to make things right. And if you do, everything's going to be fine. But if you won't, then everything's not going to be fine. That's how I approach it. Most of the time, that's all it takes. They get mad. Uh, we had the one fellow here. I won't name his name. He started promoting uh, uh, the, uh, some, some ministries that were heretical on some things. They deny the rapture and, and against dispensationalism. And, and I just tried to tell him, we're not going to promote those ministries, and uh, you can't do that here. And he gets mad and starts cussing me and yelling at me. Leaves, drives off, never comes back. Well, that means church discipline worked. <laughs> because the idea of church discipline is to reconcile, if you will, but if not, you need to leave. I mean, that's, the, that's what really what church discipline is. In, uh, Romans 16, 17 is one of the places we go. If, if you want if you want a couple of Bible verses to nail this thing down, but Romans 16, 17 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Now, are we going to, do you obey that or not? It says mark them, and if they won't, Quit doing what they're doing. You avoid them. Amen. Amen. All right. That's what that's what we do here. There's other verses we can look at. Yeah. So we got to know that uh, this uh, Matthew 28, 18, 20, or it's actually 19, 25. I don't know where, where I'm at, but it's uh, tribulation uh, preparation. Also, we're supposed to do this, I guess, during the tribulation. Or what are you talking about? Revelation what? Uh, no, Matthew. Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tribulation uh, commission. It's not, uh, which they didn't do it. They they were trying, to, it was never achieved. So go and teach all the nations. Oh, yeah, it was. No, yeah, it, this has been uh, achieved in consistently throughout church history. Well, in, in church history, but not in. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there was the, the persecution of Jerusalem right. spread everybody out and forced them to obey this, yeah. It but it was for the church. Right. The right. disobedience of it is another issue. The, well, what I was trying to say is the Jews disobeyed it's on Peter, basically. And Peter disobeyed it. Or not Peter, no, Paul. No, Paul took Because they weren't teaching this. to all the nations they were on. Teaching. Yeah, but they actually obeyed it before Paul. Paul yeah. got saved in there's another three years before he even got in the ministry. Okay, so and so is at the end. It was it was uh, about the time Paul got saved that the we just do that where it's like water beans, you know, the persecution of Jerusalem took place. Yes. Yeah, but there again, a lot of these the hyper dividers when they get into this, they think they because it wasn't fulfilled right away that somehow it wasn't for right. that time. And yes, it was, but it just disobeyed. Another example is when we talk about the Mystery Sunday. They say that because Paul didn't get those mysteries until a few years after he was saved, that's where they come with this Acts 15 thing. Well, the, the fact that the mysteries 
weren't revealed or understood doesn't mean they weren't in effect already. Right. And so that's where the hyper dividers go off. And do, you, do you think that uh, this is a, you think that Matthew 28 is also a cross reference with the Mark uh, 16, mm -hmm. where we say, you know, go the whole world. 16, 15, yeah. Okay. That's, it all happened after the resurrection, yeah, right, before right before his ascension, he gave these instructions. That's what's so insane about these guys who try to say it's not for the church. He gave them right before he ascended to heaven and established the church. There'd be no reason for him to give these instructions to the people who had established the church if it wasn't to them. I've heard some people say that he told some people because they're different, you know, they're different, uh, I guess, finishing story, I guess, or gospel, not gospel, but different traditions. Well, he spent 40 days and talked to him here and talked to him there, and he didn't say verbatim the same thing every time, but the general tone is the same. So the general message, we're saying the general message is the same, but that what's said in Mark isn't necessarily the same. They, it could have been different times, like the day later. Oh, yeah, 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 I don't think it was the same time where he would have said so. I mean, it would have been... Well, there's there's passages like Romans one sixteen, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You're saying you, you preach have, the gospel. You have Acts Acts one eight two. Uh, Acts what? Uh, I think first uh, chapter one. Oh yeah, but ye shall receive power. He's talking to the people who are about to establish the church. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So that would be to the very same people he said Matthew twenty eight to, same people he said Mark sixteen fifteen to, and they fulfilled that. Right? Acts 1, so it's, it's overlapping Matthew. Yeah, yeah, this is all, all that happened between the resurrection and Pentecost. And he's speaking to them pertaining things, uh, things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Right. And so that's... I was just curious if there's like an actual command or a direct encouragement to you to preach the gospel. Like if you're going to preach the Yeah, it's kind of it's repeated here and there. Uh, we talked about, huh? Just it, there, the here's the thing. It, it, well, let me see if I I got a reference here. Uh, John sixteen thirteen. Turn there real quick. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John sixteen. We're, and we're going to have to close it up here in just a couple minutes, but I have to, no, it's too good. We're having too much fun. John sixteen thirteen, he's Jesus said this. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That's talking about the epistles. But it's also Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When he said that, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John hadn't even been written yet. And so what Paul, when Paul is teaching, he refers to this that we just read in 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. And verses 3 through 5. He says, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words. And that describes this hyper-dispensationalist group to a T. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmi surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such... There it is again, withdraw thyself. 
Now, the words of Jesus Christ aren't the epistles. He, he's writing an epistle referring to the words of Jesus Christ as found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we look at the context and we can see if he's talking directly to Jews under the law while he's walking on the earth, or is he speaking in matters that pertain to the, tr the future, which is what we saw in Matthew or in John 16, 13. The spirit of truth will come, future, and lead you into all truth, future. And he's saying, if someone does something that needs to be addressed, you talk to them alone, then you take with them two or more, and then you bring it before the church, before there is a church. Matthew 28, it's between his resurrection and the day of Pentecost, and he's leaving instructions for the very people who are about to be used to as the foundation, the apostles and the prophets, the foundation. And these people who are teaching that Matthew 28 isn't for us today want you to believe that Jesus spent 40 days teaching a bunch of people a bunch of stuff that doesn't apply to them. <laughs> Didn't apply to the... It's just crazy. The whole thing is, is that 40 days was school. They were in Jesus Bible Institute. <laughs> and they were getting... And he was saying, I'm getting ready to leave. Take note. <laughs> And then what he told them during that 40 days is what then we see play out in the book of Acts and explained in detail in Paul's epistles. And you have, uh, like I said, there's passages that we've talked about as we study, like uh, in Ephesians 5. Uh, one of the first sermons I preached was uh, actually Ephesians 5. Uh, I'm sorry, Ephesians 6. It says, um, he, Paul is saying this. Um, after he gives the... Uh, Full armor, whole armor of God. Then in verse 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance. I'm, I'm sorry. Again, in supplication for all saints. And look what he says in verse 19, or listen. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me. You listen? No, she, you can leave, she's listening. That's why he's leading up. And she's, she's waiting on a ride there. And for me, that utterance you hearing that that utterance may be given unto me that's Paul asking for prayer that he would have the boldness Amen. he says that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel Amen. that he is right there fulfilling Matthew 28 uh, 18 through 20 he's fulfilling Mark 16 15 and he's asking for prayer for himself that he would then speak, and he says in verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And other places, then he encourages his hearers or his readers to be bold and to do the same thing. Go thou do likewise. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, it's, let me tell you, Paul talked about people being um, robbed uh, from or, or uh, I'm trying to think of the word it, it, the from the simplicity that is in Christ, he said through the subtlety of Satan that they would be moved from the simplicity of Christ. The Bible is not that hard to understand, but one of the things that we've always seen through church history, but now we're seeing even two or three fold it seems, are all these guys on. YouTube and on the radio and on TV. I mean, you can't find a sound doctrine teacher on TV. And they're all trying to lead you off into these where they don't rightly divide. And the TV preachers, most of them want you to believe that you should, you know, um, send them money to get your miracle. And the sign gifts are for today and all that. And then you got uh, the radio preachers are filled most more with people who try to pull you into Calvinism or hyper dispensationalism. Uh, and then and on YouTube, it's craziness that you're seeing. Multiply. And all I can tell you is, if you stick with the very straightforward teaching of the King James Bible, you will not go wrong. But when things start getting real crazy and difficult, like we have charts. These are like very simple charts. I mean, really anybody who reads the Bible a couple of times could make up these charts. They're very simple. Not so when you, t you read some of these other guys. They start with their charts and everything. It looks like something Einstein came up with. 
And it looks like you have algebraic equations and things to try to figure out the Bible. And it's crazy. And so don't get caught up in that. Once you see somebody going off into that stuff, I, I believe this is kind of a truism. Divide it, don't hack it to pieces. <laughs> We are told to rightly divide the word of truth, not to pulverize it into mincemeat. And that's what's going on today. Use that scripture out of context one more time. <laughs> I'd love to have that on a t-shirt. All right. Any, any other? Well, we got to close. We're going, we're going a little long. I'm, I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have, and I don't have to apologize if you did. <laughs> All right. Let's stand and... Uh, I'm not going to tell you that joke. I'll say for another time. I want to stand and sing as a send-off to the kitties going off to school. Kitty with a D. Not a T. All right. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Smooches. Smooches. Thank you, Smooches. Smooches. Hi.
Well, you're about to go away for forever. This is Noah. This is the guy whose ark was floating away. <laughs> Any wise words of wisdom to say to the camera? Um, don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. I'll be talking to you. Keep us in prayer. We need it. Oh, really?